Hello everybody, thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I'm going to cover with you today what learning looks like at Care Stage 4. I will speak to you about the three main areas of teaching and learning, which is what content your children will study in lessons, how do we teach it, therefore how do they learn, and finally how we assess the content and the knowledge that we teach and how we will report that to parents so you can keep tracks and support us. So first of all, on the screen, you can see a picture of our curriculum and our curriculum vision. So on the very top of the screen, you can see the range of subjects that we offer at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4. We are very pleased with our curriculum because it's broad. As you can see, there is a range of subjects that cover um, subjects that are very academic and subjects that are very vocational and is very balanced for that same reason. We do study a range of subjects and we give all the subjects an appropriate amount of time on the timetable. Um, our curriculum is supported by the school values of Caritas and Veritas. Veritas means truth and truth is a synonym of knowledge. So our curriculum is seeking that pursuit for knowledge. We want the students to leave school being knowledge rich. But um, Caritas is also very important for us and that um, means personal growth. We want our students to leave us being good citizens. They can put that knowledge that they've learned in lessons to good use to make society and the world a better place. Um, and all of these subjects and our school values are firmly supported and grounded on our teaching and learning principles of retrieval, quality teacher expectations, questioning, modelling and scaffolding to support students of all abilities and feedback so students know how they can improve constantly. So this picture summarises what um, our curriculum vision is. I'm going to take you now to um, this document that you can find on the website called Curriculum Maps. This is a booklet created for each one of the year groups that summarises on one page the content that your child will study in each one of their subjects. So you can see on the screen now the content for Year 7 um, English. <clears throat> so you can see that during Half Term 1, the book that your children will learn uh, is My Sister Lives on the Mantelpiece. So as a parent, you can buy that book if you haven't got it at home, read it yourself and take an interest on what your children are doing at school and talk about um, what they're doing as well. Half Term 3 <clears throat> is a very challenging text, Lord of the Flies, which I studied at A level and our children do it now um, at Key Stage 3. So again, you can uh, buy that book and have conversations with your children about it. You can find these documents on the school website if you click on Parent, Letters and Information. Um, that's where you find it. Okay, so you know where to find the content that we're going to be teaching your children through the five years uh, at school. Now I'm going to move on to how we learn and, and how we teach at Hartford. Um, our lessons have got a very clear structure that uh, children will experience from one lesson to the next, from one subject to the next. Um, we do have clear routines and high expectations, therefore every lesson begins with a uh, meet and greet. The teacher will be at the door uh, welcoming the students into the lesson. We do a, a ready to learn check which will be we check the uniforms, we check the equipment and we do that at the very beginning of the lesson to ensure that there are no barriers for learning. So once the lesson starts, it will not be interrupted by children not having the right equipment. The learning kicks off with a do now retrieval task and I will explain to you what a do now looks like in a minute and why we do retrieval. Once we've retrieved all the information, uh, the teacher will do the, the explanation and this will be paused with uh, 
questioning, the use of mini whiteboards to engage everybody in the lesson. That's when the teacher will be um, using modeling and scaffolding to make sure that all the children can access the learning. And once there has been that uh, section of the lesson where the children and the teacher have been working together to digest uh, the content, there will be a time in the lesson or in the follow-up lesson where the children will have an opportunity to independently apply the knowledge and skills. And that will be done in the lesson on the supervision of the teacher. And some of those tasks will be the tasks that the departments have chosen to give feedback to the students. And the feedback will take the form of a trying out task. And I will explain to you in a minute what a trying out task is. So every uh, lesson, the learning in every lesson will begin with a um, do now retrieval. And we do that because what you can see on the screen is what we call the forgetting curve. And um, that picture just explains to you that the brain is designed to forget. So we know that whenever we teach the children on a Monday morning, very little of that will be remembered as time goes by unless that information is being retrieved and reviewed. So our curriculum team leaders have worked really hard in identifying what is the key information that children need to be able to remember from one topic to the next in order to build on knowledge. Um, and that's what we call the do now retrieval. We retrieve the key information from past topics. In most subjects, that will be a five question task at the start of the lesson. We know that practice makes perfect, but we also know now that practice makes permanent. And we do practice in lessons through our do now retrievals, but also with homework. And that's why the support from parents with regards to homework is very important. You now know how to access the content that your children are going to be learning in lessons, so you can support them and have conversations with them about it. You've got a better understanding of what our lessons look like and why retrieval is very important. So finally, I want to talk to you about how we assess the content that we teach the, the students. So we, um, our assessment strategy is divided into three different strands, um, low stake, mid stake and high stake. So the low stake is how we do our retrieval. So we assess um, past content and past knowledge every lesson uh, in the first five minutes and the way in which we feedback is by the students marking their answers with the teacher with a green pen so the teacher within the first five minutes of the lesson will know if the students are remembering past knowledge and this is a very powerful tool that informs our teaching and our planning we know if there is something that we have to reteach because the students are not quite remembering our mid-stake tests is our bookmarking. These are production tasks, extended pieces of writing for um, academic subjects, for practical subjects will be the completion of a project, um, a piece of art, a piece of music, a performance in dance. Um, and they will happen twice a half term. And these tasks are marked by the teacher. So the do now retrieval is marked by the students uh, under the guidance of the teacher, but the mid stake tests are marked by the teacher. Everybody in the year group will have the same mid stake tests and we will give the students a comment on the strengths, what they've done well, and a try now task, which gives the students an opportunity to address the misconceptions, uh, the things that they've got wrong, so progress can be made. And those try now tasks will be bespoke to the students. And the final type of um, assessment is the high stake test. These are summative exams where we will be testing the knowledge that we've taught your children from the beginning of the year. Um, they take place three times a year for key stage four students, November, February and June. And after we've completed those high stake assessments, we will report to you to let you know how um, your children are doing. We feedback 
um, in the same way as we do with mid-stake tests because the teacher will be marking those assessments so your children will receive a strength comment and a try now task which now you are very familiar with and you know gives the students an opportunity to address misconceptions to fill any gaps in learning and informs the teacher in their planning of follow-up lessons so for both mid-stake and high-stake tests we dedicate time in the lesson to fix the learning as we're talking about assessments now i thought it would be useful for you to have um, a list of the key assessment dates and reporting dates for year 10. so you've already had the key stage 4 information evening thank you for attending or thank you for watching this presentation the first time we will report to you will be on attitude to learning in october and that is really important because we believe that attitude to learning is what makes all the difference for children achievement they will complete um sorry we will have the opportunity to talk to you in more detail about that attitude to learning report on the 7th of november uh, when we do our progress day and you will have the opportunity to attend that progress day uh, face to face or have a virtual appointment we will do our first high stake assessment in november we will report to you before christmas Students will complete the second uh, high-stake assessment in February and we will report to you again um, in March and the final uh, high-stake assessment will be at the end of the year. We will send you a report and then we will invite you to um, have a meeting with, your, with the teachers and discuss that progress um, during the parents' evening on the 13th of July. So by that point, by the end of the year, we will have a lot of information ready for the beginning of year 11. I'm going to finish off by uh, telling you how you can support your child by accessing two very effective tools that are at your disposal at Hartford. So the first one is the knowledge organizers, which are booklets that summarize all the core knowledge for each subject. They are the best revision guides and the best, the, the best tool that your children can use to do homework as well, and for you as a parent to support them. And secondly, this uh, app, such a one that we've introduced this year. So I'm going to talk briefly about the knowledge organizers. I've already mentioned they are a booklet that contains the core knowledge for that subject uh, in that particular half term. So if you go to the school website and you go to students, then you can click on knowledge organizers and you will see something like this. Uh, I've picked the year 10 one and you can see how uh, for half term five in English literature, the students uh, study Macbeth. This is a very challenging text. So the English department have summarized on one page only the key characters, the key quotes, the plot, uh, the themes, all the things that the students need to remember in order to be successful in their exams. And we've done exactly the same for Key Stage 3 for every subject, for every half term. So I would encourage you as parents to have a look at those knowledge organisers and um, ask your children to use it as well and refer to them when they're doing homework. They don't take textbooks home um, and these are the best textbooks, the best revision guides. The second thing that I would encourage you to have on your phone, if you haven't done so already, is the app Satchel One. This gives you instant access to information about homework, behaviour, timetables, attendance and detentions. And the, the key is instant. As we are um, giving your children positive behaviour points or negative behaviour points, you get that information at the same time. Their attendance, their detentions, or all of that that you want to know as a parent. So if you click on attendance, straight away you can see if your child has got 100% attendance and if they've been punctual to lessons. I particularly like the behaviour section because once again, you can see that Mary scored 13 positive points and zero negative points. If you then click on the point breakdown here, it will then tell you what all those positive behaviour points have been given for. You can see that Mary has got a range of teachers giving 
her beha- a positive behavior for you. So she's doing fantastically well in lessons across all lessons. Um, if she had negative behavior points, you would also be able to see in what subject and the reason why. Homework is particularly useful. We are seeing a great increase in students completing homework on time, which is only helping them to become more organized with their times. And that is, as we all know, something that would be very useful when they become um, older and they have a, a job. Time management is, is a skill that everybody wants to have. Um, so you can see what tasks have been set, what is overdue, um, so you can support your children in making sure it is completed. If you click on the tasks, uh, due or tasks set, you can see um, a list of uh, the subjects and the type of task and explanation. So what this app does is it removes all the excuses and potential barriers for not completing homework. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me directly or to contact Ms. Gittins, who is uh, the Year 10 Head of Year. Thank you very much. Ask an explanation.